Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Sportsman's Warehouse, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and Avery Superstore. Good Saturday morning, and this is not Larry Ray, it's not Dave Gabbard. This is Gene Smith, the other part of the Daryl and Daryl Show, and our good friend Bill Kutze is here. We're going <laughs> to talk about ducks, one of his favorite things to talk about. Probably my favorite thing, and... You know, now we're our, our first waterfowl season of the year opened last weekend, and I did not take advantage of the early Uh-oh. goose season. Um, but I I hope some of our listeners got out and did it because it's a world of fun if you can find a bunch of those resident Canada's going into a field. I think uh, Dave said he knew where somewhere in uh, Southern Illinois right now. But uh, that's right. You yeah, they love golf them. courses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, five iron. It doesn't tear them. Up, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have friends in other parts of the country who actually have uh, permission to to hunt Canada geese on some of these golf courses, but you know they'll have to start at certain like before the you know they'll have like a forty five minute window early in the morning, right? Or, yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, they'll shut it down early one afternoon, and uh, uh, that's one of those little things we we talk about access for hunting, and sometimes you have to think outside the box, and yeah. it can be surprising what you can find. Could that be a nuisance hunt, Dave? I, well, I don't know. I, I had a real, I got a real good friend that owns a course uh, in Middle Tennessee, and he's been there for a few years. You know, he had problems with, uh, you know, big resident flocks coming into, you know, his. Uh, he had several big lakes on the course, and uh, so he was at picking, you know, my brain about it. I said, "Hey, we got a September goose season. Just go ahead and let, you know." I'm pretty sure you know people that would be right. responsible and safe and everything, and just go ahead and contact them and let them come in, and let them use a the golf cart <laughs> 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 and roll up there because really the geese. Uh, Your camo is a golfing outfit, right? That's right, <laughs> and as long as the golf cart comes to a complete stop, you're not there you go. Of, you're not hunting out of a motorized vehicle. There you, you go. <laughs> well, that. So, to be fair, the folks I was talking about actually do go out on the golf course in the dark and put out some decoys and all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Bellevue Baptist Church, when I was teaching a the class out there, they had some uh, 3D decoys of coyotes to keep the geese out of their yards. And that probably works for yeah. about two days. Yeah. They get used to but, it, yeah. yeah. Those... The, uh, you know, I used to have some real good friends that lived on up out of Nashville on Old Hickory. And uh, right there on the water, and he was, he called me one time. He says, what can I do about these geese? He said, I looked out in my backyard this morning. I've got over 300 geese, you know. So he said, I had this good idea. I turned my dog out there to let him, and they, he run out there, and the geese whooped him back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> so. now, I, I've been told you can string fishing line just with, like, little short cut-off tomato steaks string it around the perimeter of your yard about 10 inches off the ground, and that'll generally keep them, if they're walking into your, your yard, that'll right, keep them from right. doing it. But I don't know how true right. it is. But uh, regardless, uh, well, we used to have some great hunts out in Fayette County, but I haven't even tried the last several years. Um, it, it's not that difficult if you'll get out and look around uh, this time of year to find a you know, a cut silage field or a, a sod farm or places like that that, geese are going to just follow them out there and then try to get permission if you can it can be a fun hunt uh, but but now we're about to have our our teal and wood duck seasons opening up which important note tennessee uh, out of our neighboring states tennessee and kentucky are the only ones that allow wood ducks or arkansas and mississippi are teal only um, but uh, they're all opening up this next weekend the thing about ducks you really got to know your product i mean there's so many different ones i used to hunt with dan fuqua and mm-hmm. we were, he looked up in the sky and said, those are those and these are they. I said, hi, no work, can you tell? Of course, different birds fly differently. Yes, they do. And I didn't know that much about good ducks or geese back then. Plus, Dan's place was mostly gadwalls, so he was, he's going to be right nine times out of ten if he just said gadwall. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, with the teal, um, it, Teal are set early because they're one of the few ducks who that migrate strictly on the calendar, almost strictly on the calendar. I mean, this time of year, if there's a little bitty cold front, they're not waiting on ice to push them out. The blue-winged teal aren't. Um, they're already 
you know, hundreds of thousands of them uh, on the Louisiana coast that friends of mine have been sending me pictures of and all. So um, they come all the way south on, on, the, uh, on the calendar, basically, in a little bitty cold front. And the only thing you really have to worry about, number one, would be wood ducks in those states where wood ducks are not allowed to be shot. But they fly very differently and mm-hmm. usually don't even use the same uh, habitat. But uh, uh, the ones you really have to watch for this time of year are spoonbills. Because spoonbills aren't that much different in size and silhouette from a blue-winged teal. And even their wing patches in flight are, are pretty similar. So uh, that's one place I've known a lot of people to end up with a ticket. Um, they'll even mix up in a flock of blue-winged teal. And uh, so those of you who are going out, be careful of that. You know, take a good hard look at those birds when you're pulling the trigger. Um, Dave, you ever run into a lot of problems like that where people get the wrong duck or... No, not really. You know, everybody that, you know, when I worked in enforcement, uh, they, uh, yeah, I can remember one time watching, you know, working up in the Camden units up there at, uh, at the Big Sandy. And, uh, and this was during the late duck season, but, uh, it, we were sitting back watching, you know, looking at blinds and stuff. And, uh, every, on one of the blinds, every duck that come off the Tennessee River wanted in that hole. Mm-hmm. And then we have sitting there, and a group of canvasbacks come by. And that was one of the years that canvasbacks was closed. <laughs> and uh, we got to, I said, well, now we'll, we'll, I will see if whoever's duck hunting in that blind knows the duck. And the cans, they, you know, buzzed them and turned around and swooped right in, and nobody fired a shot. So All I said, right. well. Somebody knows what they're doing. There yeah. You know, and, uh, there you go. But, so, but yeah, you know, it's 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 like you, you know, that's the thing that uh, if you spend enough time watching waterfowl and watching the different species and the way they fly and stuff, and uh, kind of commit that to memory, you know, you can you can uh, learn, you know, basically, uh, you know, what they are from the way they fly mm-hmm. and. Uh, where the how far you know the wings you know some you know divers usually have the wings a little bit further back on their body and uh and the and silhouettes the and, and so uh, dave do you remember yeah, back in the early up. 80s when we were allowed in tennessee you could shoot four teal or wood ducks any mix of the four plus one mistake duck right i remember that i love the mistake duck days i was, <laughs> I was a teenager then we'd always go to real foot because it was one of those places that usually you know are you stood a good chance of finding some teal and not just wood ducks of course the wood ducks were there plus with all the boathouse mallards around real foot lake your mistake duck was pretty much guaranteed mm-hmm. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i found a video uh for one of my class one time talking about divers and what divers and puddlers they mm-hmm. call yeah and then you, you can really learn a lot about ducks ducks is something you probably takes a long time to learn about them but it's just, it's very interesting very interesting it, it is they all fill a different niche yeah, exactly. in that ecosystem and, yeah. and they're really developed over the eons to, to fill those niches uh, you know uh, and, and of course they're fun they're beautiful to watch they're great to eat um yeah, Dan Fuqua and I were trapping wood ducks one time out in Shelby Forest, and, of course, we had a mishap, and a couple of them got uh, injured pretty seriously. <laughs> but Dan was worried about it. I said, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to take a moment to eat them because I never ate a wood duck before. And he said, well, do this and do that. I said, no, I want to taste what they taste like regularly. And they mm-hmm. were pretty good. I, I didn't want to wrap them in bacon or nothing like that. But Right. Yeah, but wood, wood was, duck's generally real good. Yeah. Uh, wood ducks are good. The teal are wonderful. Um, now these early Canada geese, you, you have to doctor on them a little bit. Yeah. I hadn't ate much geese except some people say they're too greasy. What the snows or something? No, that's wives tale. That's what that I'm really saying. is. Yeah. It, it's, that's, there's nothing to that, but these early Canada's, uh, they've spent all summer eating minnows mm-hmm. and grass, mm-hmm. you know, and grass is not a great food for, in a bird to make them good to eat right uh, you know it tends to make them kind of tough and and stringy whereas once they start getting on the corn for a few weeks it's amazing how fast uh their flavor will improve all right yeah you know a lot of people don't realize you know canada geese they're grazers <laughs> just mm-hmm. like a just like a cow out there you know out there 
on on the lawns and stuff and uh so uh that's one of the reasons why you know if you live on a lake and you've got a nice manicured lawn and there's geese there uh, <laughs> they're just gonna zero in on you that's exactly right but what uh dave you know as well as anyone around here what what do you think are the the local hot spots public hot spots for wood ducks in general you have any I, you know i would probably say uh anywhere that you've got access and permission to hunt you know below the you know below the bluffs mm-hmm. uh, you know on up probably probably the number one hot spot everybody will go to will be up around real foot lake yeah uh back in there and uh which uh it's uh you know of course i've you know, used to have a lot of people uh, would call and ask about Real Foot Lake, and the first question I would always ask them, well, have you ever been to Real Foot Lake? <laughs> right, they yeah. Say, they say no. I said, well, let me give you a piece of advice. I said, uh, you need to, it might be a little late, but you need to book your guide. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, because... If you don't know the lake and you take you take your equipment up there, the boat and motor, you're you're just going to tear it up because mm-hmm. you don't know because that lake is just you know full of stumps. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, you got to get up there, go slow, and the first time you're on the water, it doesn't need to be at 4 a.m. looking for some hole in the lily pads to shoot wood ducks. From. Right, and 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 if, especially if you don't know where those white signs with those blue geese on them are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that refuge boundary. Uh, that's because most, you know, half of Real Foot Lake is probably National Wildlife Refuge. Right, so. exactly. right. And North- then, of course, you know, for all of our friends that are going to be hunting teal in Mississippi and Arkansas, that uh, tends to be more of a flooded field kind of thing. If you can find a low spot in a harvested rice field, you know, and get a little water in there, that, that can be a real hot spot. You know, some of the more open sloughs, but they like open areas, whereas, you know, your wood ducks are going to be right. down in the bottoms and in the in the trees. Um, which is why in Tennessee we tend to hunt a lot more wood ducks, and in other places they do a little bit better with the teal. But, uh, All right, about time to take another break in it, Shelby. She's taking good care of us. She Dave. is. She's keeping us on task. All right, Jason. Yeah. Come on. I'm glad I'm not there so she can't come with me. Yeah, she's doing a good <laughs> job. All right, like, like Brother Dave said, sit back and get you another cup of coffee, and we'll be right back with Outdoors with Larry Ray. 